for everything that is a little bit more complex, especially if you have some magic or like magic formula in your code, then you, you should comment your code. Welcome to the first episode of Smarter Software Outsourcing Podcast. If you're a business owner or a CTO looking to make the most out of your remote development team setup, you're just in the right place. My name is Frederick Joy, and together with my guests, I'll show you the inner workings of a software development company and address complex outsourcing matters to deepen your understanding and hopefully help you make better decisions. Today, I want to talk about one of the most debated topics in the industry, should programmers comment their code? And why bother if they already are writing good clean code? And if they do, how much should they comment? This is a thorny issue and I'm happy to welcome Eric Ecker, Senior Software Architect, to debate on this matter. So hi Eric and welcome to the show. Hi Fred. So just a quick background about Eric. Eric has been working as a software engineer for more than 20 years. As a senior architect for Arcanis, he works closely with the developers to instill the habit of learning, clean coding, reusability, and testing with the goal of increasing the overall quality of the products delivered by the teams. And today's exercise, I call it the two minute drill. I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions, Eric. And you basically have, we'll try maximum two minutes to answer each question. If it's shorter, that's okay as well. And well, we can basically get started anytime you want, uh, unless you would like to do a, a quick intro about yourself, uh, about the topic. No, you, you say it enough. That's fine. <laughs> okay, cool. So let's get into it. The first question is actually, should you actually comment your code? Yes, so I think everyone should really comment their code, even if they work alone. Because, I mean, you're not going to remember what you did six months before. And so uh, it's quite important. It's going to help you a lot. And especially if you work in a team as well, because it's going to help your colleague to, to understand what you did. Okay. And so what makes it even more important in an outsourcing setup? Because that's the kind of environment you're you're being used to. You previously worked in, in Switzerland within a team, and then you moved to remote office uh, in Switzerland. And then you joined us here in the Philippines, where we work with our clients, uh, mostly remotely. Sometimes we have our clients come here, but uh, why is it so important in, in this outsourcing setup? I think our clients have the tendency to transfer the team more often than when you have an internal team, um, in-house team. And so it's quite important when you transfer the code to, to a new company or to new, a new team, uh, like new developers to have a good documentation. So, so sorry to interrupt you, but you mean uh, when you do the transition from your own team to an outsourced team, or do you mean, uh, yeah, when, totally. when people, team members are joining or, or leaving? Uh, or both. both. Oh, ah, yeah. Okay. Also, if you want to take the product back in house, then you will be happy to, to have a good documentation and, and good quality of, of code. Okay. And so since we said why it's so important, can you quickly explain how to comment your code? So maybe where it should happen in the code or if there are different ways to, to comment? Uh, after, I don't know, big sections of code or some smaller sections where you have to explain a particular algorithm or whatever, or calculations maybe, or rules and, and uh, what you shouldn't comment or maybe what yeah. maybe not necessary. Okay. So, well, first you should not comment what, what's obvious because the goal is not to rewrite exactly what you actually wrote in the code. And then... For everything that is a little bit more complex, um, especially if you have some magic or like magic formula in your code, then you, you should comment your code. And also then there is a, we have, we use some tools, uh, for, used for documentation and we can automatically document, like create a document that we can publish in some kind of website. And, um, and so, to 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 feed that tool, we need to write comment in our code, and so that's also quite useful. And um, so, as you look after a, a part of the team at Arcanis, uh, what do you what do you do, or how can you help people better comment their code? Like, is there any things you you insist on, or some training you give them? 
uh, to take the habit of, of the good commenting practices. So I would say first you have to explain them why, why it's important because I mean, that's a good start. If they understand why it's so important for a company, then they are most probably going to do it. And then, um, well, you should do some code reviews on a daily basis. And when you see that they don't really add enough comment, then just, just tell them. So that would be, uh, that's also an interesting, uh, part is the, is the code review. The, the, the podcast today, I mean, this, this episode is not about, uh, about that, but maybe, um, maybe you could briefly explain, uh, that part as well. Um, how, how do we code review? Well, yeah, I mean, the, the usefulness of, of the code reviewing, not just in, in checking whether the, the, the teams have done the, commented their code properly, but also what do you just quickly check and, 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 uh, yeah, mostly, mostly that. Well, code reviewing is the best way to, to, to actually learn something or to teach something as well. That go both way. And then it's also to ensure the quality of the code and the quality of the application and to spot some problems, security problems or bugs or whatever. And so, yeah, usually we do that for every change. Um, the developers doing the code and, and we, we simply read the code. Basically, we read the code and we add some comment and then we validate or not um, the code, the changes. And uh, speaking of, of, of that, what are the costs and consequences of, um, I would say, uh, no commenting, for example, or bad commenting? What are, what are yeah, the risks of, of uh, You're making? going to lose a lot of time reading your code again uh, six months down the road. Or if you transfer your code to somebody else, going to, or she's going to have some problems um, because I mean, yeah, uh, some, some part of the code are not going to be obvious. And so it's good when you have a small explanation of, of what the, the first developer did uh, before you. And the cost of that, well, uh, you, you lose a lot of time um, just trying to understand what, what you did or what somebody else did. And we were talking about these code reviews. So does it also help you as a code reviewer? Because that's what also what you do with us, uh, Tarkanis. Uh, you review the code of, of a big amount of the developers. Um, does it help you also do more efficient code reviews, trying to understand what was in, in the developer's mind when he coded the specific part of the, of the application? And, and so, um, yeah, you can. You can understand the patterns they have if they have like um, some habits that maybe we should change or try to change. And so by reading their code, you, you can you can try to understand something out, out of the mistakes they, they, they do. Or also what they, they do good. I mean, yeah, of course, <laughs> it goes both ways. Um, and speaking of that, how do you... Uh, determine the good or bad quality of, of the commenting? Like, how can you, uh, how would you describe it? Uh, you said we shouldn't describe something that's obvious. Yeah. Um, what, what else? Well, usually there is no, uh, not that much comment. So that's the first step I would say, when there is no comment, they, they should add more comment. Um, and then, yeah, uh, sometimes they also copy past the, the, co the comments. So that's not really good, uh, especially when they forget to change <laughs> the, what they, they, they pass it. So it doesn't mean anything anymore. And, um, yeah, then we are going to try to be clear and explicit about what we want to explain in the comments. And most of the time when, uh, when a developer is um, is not commenting their code or um, not doing a good job, is it because sometimes they 
is it laziness or they have trouble explaining what they did or maybe both or so something different what's the yeah what's the the common patterns you've seen over the years yeah i would say both <laughs> and then also because they don't really have a habit of of commenting the code and um it takes time to to write something and also you have to to kind of compose or to have some some idea about what you what you have to comment and how you you want to comment that so yeah it takes time and that's one of the reasons why they don't really like that because i would say they are focused on the on what they have to create or, and also because sometimes the deadline are kind of short so they are stressed out with that and they don't really understand the value of, of adding a comment. Mm. So until a few months down the road when they have to re yeah. maybe refactor some code or <clears throat> or yeah. Yeah, and then they they complain about not understanding their own code anymore. And usually you can tell them, yeah, well, next time just write a line of comment in your code and that's it. So would you say that more senior or seasoned developers that I mean, you you looking after and have had to review their own code uh, down the road. They understand the value of of this commenting and and uh, do it uh, more often than maybe more junior people that still have to to. Yeah, to go because that. I would say <clears throat> you you kind of hate yourself when six months down the road you <laughs> you don't understand anymore what you wrote. So this has happened to you as yeah, well. Yeah. I mean, you learn that. By doing, I mean, <laughs> so yeah, and and so when you 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 realize that you should just have added a one line of text, and that would be that would have been really a handful. Then and next time you are going to do it, yeah, because you know it's going to save you like uh, thirty minutes. And also, as a developer, usually you don't like to lose time and to, I mean, to to spend time on useless stuff. So. You just want want to to create something fun and, mm -hmm. and new and and nice. So. Yeah, and um, so we talked about being in an outsourced setup where I mean you're looking after the team. Sometimes um, okay, we're working remotely with 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 clients, and you're most of the time in in the office, and then so you can actually meet with the developers and run through the code, uh, talk about this commenting stuff amongst other things. And uh, but you also sometimes uh, are traveling, for example, and and uh, how so? How would you manage this as a remote manager uh, of of a team of people that you have to uh, quality check, to uh, mentor, to or and to review the code? So any tips for yeah managing these people remotely, uh, like you've experienced here? Well, it's quite the same than when you are. In the same office. I mean, most of the tools are in the cloud, so you can just access the tools from anywhere. Then it just, I mean, but that's for everything. It's just about communication. So you you will have to Skype or to to Slack the the, the, the developer and to give a good explanation. Usually, I I prefer to do that on on Skype or. I mean, voice by voice, right. and not writing an email. Um, yeah. We we wrote, we write email because uh, we want to keep tra trace of everything. But then, uh, for the explanation, the final explanation, and the learning teaching, uh, then Skype or voice is actually better. So, and then do you do this with like a screen share, for example, and then you go through the the parts of yeah. the code that. Uh, are problematic if there are some things that yeah need to we be can reviewed. share the screen we can highlight the the code that is bad and then we can also do like live coding session um, where the the reviewer is going to show or to give a good example of of what the developer uh, should have done. Okay, um, and well. I'm pretty done with my list of questions, um, but I wanted to ask you if there is any other things uh, 
I should have been asking you, right, about about the, this uh, code commenting or things that you think are really important to maybe remember. Um, and and lastly, a few tips uh, for people who are listening to us or watching us um, on what they could implement easily uh, for their own teams, be it, uh, teams in their own office or teams they're working with uh, remotely. I would say they should be careful about adding comment in, the, in their code and then doing the, the code reviews are going to be really helpful. And all that is part of the clean code um, uh, mindset. I mean, so it's going to make everybody, the team, the company faster and more efficient. So, yeah. And so uh, maybe one last question is, um, when you when you do code reviews, what's the good uh, time frame to do code reviews with with a uh, one developer? So you're following a group of devs, and then there's one project on which you're working. What? How would you? How would this work? Would you meet with all the guys part of the team, maybe four or five people every other week when you guys release something, or is it like one on one sessions where you sit down with? Uh, with a developer and then uh, run him through what you found. So the code review process is going to be done on a daily basis. Maybe at the end of the day, you're going to do 20 minutes of reviews of, of everything that's been changed uh, within the day. And then if they need more explanation and uh, um, specific or like, yeah, specific explanation on something, then we are going to do a, a Skype or a meeting um, by, by the end of the week or something like that. Okay, where you put pack in a few days of code reviews that yeah. you've... Uh, you can also uh, pick, pick up some, some, some topics that are going to be interesting for everyone. And so you create yeah. a classroom and you teach something to, to everyone at the same time. Okay, um, and, and so I promise this one is the last question okay. for you. Um, if, you if you're a dev and, and want to maybe have some resources about um, good practices of, of, well, we talked about clean coding and I think that will be part of a, a next episode. Uh, but just for the commenting, are there some good resources you can find online that would give tips and maybe help being more efficient because you said, Devs want to be efficient and don't waste too much of their time where they could get just a good habit of, of commenting their code. Um, I, I, well, you can search on Google and you're probably going to find like thousands of, of, of blogs or blog posts or anything, but um, there is still a debate online that whether or not you should comment your code. Uh, for me, it's quite clear. So then you can you can do whatever you want, but and about the quality of the comment, um, not really. I think as 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 soon as what you write is useful and clear and give a good explanation to your team, then, then I would say it's fine. So you are a proponent of uh, commenting the code, and you said there's a debate online about uh, whether you should or you should not. So your your take is okay. We should do it. What is the point of people who who say um, there's no point of commenting the code? What what do they say? They say that their code is kind of self-explanatory. Uh, so uh -huh. that their code is so good that they don't need more explanation. But actually, <laughs> most of the time you read the code and you are like, mm, okay, well. You should have added a few lines here and there. So, um, yeah, maybe they are, I would say, overconfident about the code they write. And also, you cannot really explain why you did something and the business side of, of, of the code you write uh, using variables names or, yeah. I mean, good naming conventions. So that's still something you have to explain. But you can write that in a document, like a separate document, but then it's not going to be read quite a lot because most people don't like reading documentation, right? So if it's in the middle, like in your face, 
uh, explanation, then they are not going to miss it. Or yeah, exactly. That's just it's going to be more efficient yeah. again. Okay, cool. Well, thank you very much, Eric. Um, You're welcome. And uh, I hope to see you uh, next time. Yeah, next time. Thank you very much. Goodbye. That's it for today. Thank you so much for listening and I hope you can draw something helpful out of this discussion with Eric. If you would like to react to this episode or just share your experience with code commenting with your teams, I'd love to hear from you. Just email me at fred at smartersoftwareoutsourcing.com and we'll pick up the conversation from there on end. Thank you.